You know, again, all we hear, we hear often people don't know what it's like in their world. Well, we, our next speaker is in their world. With the YMCA's in uh, Greater Louisville are one of my favorite, nonprofit favorite companies. They have great personnel. They are sometimes the, uh, the final resort for some youth, and they take great care of kids. The people I have met are so incredibly devoted. They are so talented. They care. I tell you, if we had, if, if the Y is able to expand, I don't think we'd need any more youth alerts because they would be able to do it all themselves. They're, they're that good. We've had the uh, YMCA safe place here um, uh, uh, back in December, and today we're going to have the Black Achievers, but we are very fortunate, very fortunate, because we have the president of the Greater Louisville YMCA, President Tavis. Good morning. Um, it's interesting that um, there was so much conversation from Gil and from uh, Ralph about choices. And um, I think I'm going I'm to give you a choice right now. And he, all, one of the last things he said, he used one of my favorite words in the English language. He said about excellence. So you all have been sitting for close to an hour, and um, at the Y we like to take activity breaks. But the choice I'm going to give you is. You, I'm going to ask you to stand up and do a couple of wacky things in just a second, just to kind of uh, get a little more oxygen to our brains and get our, get our blood flowing a little bit. Um, and each of us will have the opportunity to say, to decide this is cool or this is not cool, or I'm just going to do it a little bit just so nobody will hassle me, or I'm going to get everything I can out of it. Now, what I perceive to be part of excellence is, um, Somebody told me as I was a teenager in the YMCA some years ago, they said, you're going to be there anyway. It doesn't, it's not going to take you any longer to do your best. So I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the opportunity. So just everybody stand up where you are. And I know that I, here's what I'm going to ask. All right. So the young people in the audience, you keep an eye on the adults. Adults in the audience, you keep an eye on the young people. And let's see, if, let's see who strives for the greatest level of excellence. So all I want you to do is, hopefully you've got room in your chair, by your chair, is just to take your hands and slap your knees. Clap, reach, clap. Slap, clap, reach, clap. Clap, reach, slap, reach. Now, this time instead of just, just bending over to slap, we're going to drop our backs, drop our butts toward the seat, but without sitting down. We're going to drop our butts, so instead of bending over, we're going to keep our back straight, use our legs to slap, and then we're going to clap, and then we're going to reach. When you reach, I want to see who, who of us can squeeze our ears with our shoulders. All right, so here we go. We're going to slap, clap, reach, clap, slap, reach, squat, reach, Squat, reach, five, four, three, two, one. All right, and a round of applause for your sake, okay? So each of us have the opportunity to make decisions like this on a, on a regular basis um, relative to the way we approach excellence and th just the little goofy things that we do like what we just did or the more serious things. I will tell you that um, I am not discouraged. I spend time with a lot of young people. I'm the director of a leaders program, a regional leaders program that, that has 700 young people between the ages of 13 and 18 that attend. I see some of the programs, I know that I recognize some of the programs that are here with adults and as well as with the youth that are in the audience right now. And I recognize that um, our youth are some of our greatest assets that we have in the community. And so one of my commercials, and, and, you know, and I, I don't know how I drew the straw to have to speak behind Ralph, because he's one of my 
one of the people I admire greatly in the community. And I'm, I'm going to make a couple of points here, and then I'm going to get out of the way so you can hear from Lynn Johnson, who I love hearing talking about our relationships with young people. But um, so, you know, we, we see youth as assets and we see youth as magnificence. Now, I hope you recognize that this program was scheduled far before there was any of the violence of the previous week. So we're not here as a reaction to that, and probably in the absence of that, in, probably in some cases, our conversations would be much different than, than maybe the way they'll proceed. But um, youth is assets and youth is magnificent. So if we look at the past week, you know, my observation is, is that um, there were a small number of folks, and when I talk about youth as assets and youth as magnificence, that doesn't mean that we don't deal with inappropriate behavior. I believe that inappropriate behavior, there should be consequences for that. We should learn from it and move forward. And I believe that, that in the past week, um, I would suggest to you that, um, that there was a small number of people that were perpetuating very inappropriate behavior that should be dealt with very firmly. There was a large number of people that I would classify as spectators. I happened to watch one of the videos of some of the kids in one of these surveillance videos that was on the news or the internet or something. And um, I saw some kids jumping on cars and things like that. The very few, as a matter of fact, of the ones that were in the video. I also saw some of the other young people uh, kind of spilling off and heading in a different direction. And I believe that that um, was a very significant part of the dynamic of what we saw, and we'll come back to that in just a second. So I, I tend to uh, kind of default to words that start with the letter P and word that starts with the letter C. And that's what I would like to kind of leave as my contribution to this dialogue this morning. First of all, is place. There's a lot of conversation about where do the young people have that they can go, and, and we, need, we need good places. Hopefully the YMCA is part of that. There are many agencies, our school systems, and things like that that offer places for us to go. But I think the place, I think conversations that start just with a place are not complete thoughts. Because I believe that there's also a, um, a role for each of us as people. That'd be the second word, place, then people. Ralph talked about some key influences in his life, and he's not as old as I am, but he remembered their names. That's, that's very significant. And the idea that, um, that people are important in that, you know, I think I heard, I had a friend that was a, a stock market person that traded stocks and all that, and he said one time, he said, you know, Steve, um, play in the stock market is not about the timing of the market. It's about your time in the market. And I would suggest to you as we work together, whether you're an adult working with youth, whether you're a youth working with other youth, or whether you're a youth working with adults, it's not about the timing of what we do. It's not, it's not about just showing up at a particular place. It's very easy to show up after the week we've had in Louisville because everybody's wanting to react to all that and so on and so forth. It's not so easy to be like youth alert, to be here continuously and being looking at this over a, a long period of time. And I think that's true of us as well. And so the, the ability of us to stick together, to work together, to build together around certain principles, which that will be my third P word, then that will be our success or lack thereof is the extent to which we can, we can be together over time. It's not the timing of being together, it's our time in being together. And I think there's a big difference in that. The, um, the, and I said the third P word that I have will also lead us to some C words, and that's principles. I think we need to share principles. 
And I wonder, and I was talking to Ralph earlier this morning, and I have the blessing of serving as the director of this of this regional leader school that I do with. I have I, I get to spend a week with 713 to 18 year olds, and it's it's a great blessing. And I will tell you, this is a school where everybody that shows up can fail. Okay, people come to the school, they pass, they fail. And yet, we have very high expectations. We, um, we have a schedule that's fairly rigorous. And we have a demand for that school. We turn people away from this school because we don't have the bed space at this particular conference center. Because, and I think people ask me frequently, what, what makes that so popular? And what, what the youth tell me is, is they want the expectations, they have the ability to live up to those expectations, and they want to be part of something that expects some expectations. And youth, you don't do us adults any service when you just allow us to cruise along and not be, not be effective and being good examples. And adults, I don't believe that we do the youth any service when we just try to be their friend rather than a, um, a partner with them in a journey toward an appropriate life. The other thing that um, I come to is about the idea of, um, of values. Have we thought about what our values are? At the Y, we have four core values, honesty, care, and respect, and responsibility. Not that those are the magical right values to have, but I wonder about how many of us have the idea uh, and could actually tell a neighbor who's in this audience, here are the values that I think are important that I'm going to try to work my life around. And if, if we struggle to answer that, both individually as well as within the group's schools, I know, I know Brown Foreman, I've read a lot of their material and, and we, we work very closely with them and I know that they have specific values that they aspire to um, as they go about their work. And, um, and that, those kinds of values give us the direction by which we are able to make our decisions. And, and again, you heard the last, um, the last couple of comments by Ralph talk about we all have decisions to make, and that's true. And we, the complexity of our society right now, and I look at some of the young people that I see out there, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm glad I'm not having to grow up right now because I'm not sure, you know, I hope that I could handle the complexities that you all have to handle. I admire um, what you, you do in that regard. And so as I, as I get to some C words now, you know, some of us have heard the old cliche, character is doing the right thing. You know what that is? Character is doing the right thing when? When no, one is, when no one is looking or no one is around. So I was actually talking to a group of young people. This has probably been about 15 years ago. And we were talking about, you know, what are the things that are challenging you in your school and so on and so forth. And I found that um, actually when I was talking to them, some of them were talking about some of the same things that we talked about when I was in high school like 9,000 years ago. And that was um, the idea of, you know, of smoking or using drugs. And um, I asked the young people, I said, given all the information that's out there, just take tobacco use, for example, all the things that are out there relative to tobacco use, why is it that any person would choose to use tobacco, knowing all the risks that go with that? And they gave me the same answer that we gave folks back a million years ago, and that is peer pressure. So I said, you know, there, so, and then I asked them, I said, do any of the folks that you know that smoke are, are, don't know that it's not good for you? And of course the answer was no, they all know it's not good for me. And so I'm thinking to myself, what is this gap between knowing what's right and wrong and acting on what's right and wrong? And I would suggest to you, and I'm going to add, I want to, I want to hitchhike on the cliche that I just mentioned about characters doing the right thing when nobody's looking. And I'm suggesting that the other C word um, is courage. 
And I would suggest to you that courage is doing the right thing when everybody's looking. I was extraordinarily impressed with the courage that I saw in that video when I saw some of the young people that were following the very few that were perpetuating some of this violence over the last week. And I saw them kind of um, spill off to the side and, and actually literally run away from the group and behind the building and off in a different direction. And, you know, I thought that, that that took a lot of courage because, you know, that, you know, that probably wouldn't have been cool to some of the ringleaders of that. And they could have, they could have actually been beat on themselves just by not supporting everything that was going on by these ringleaders. So I felt like that that was a very, very courageous thing um, that they did. And so, you know, and, and certainly at the Y and obviously in our community, we don't necessarily have all the answers, but the idea of the fact that, that all of us can come together and, and have an opportunity to make decisions that will, that on some cases may require a great deal of courage, but that will take us from knowing what's right, because there's no question in my mind that everyone in the room, everyone on that video, and everyone that we've been reading about in the paper and so forth over the last week, knows the right thing to do. We may have a challenge on the bridge associated with this, the issue of courage, and that is acting on the right thing to do, which is very, very challenging sometimes. And so, you know, when my daughter, who's now 34 years old, I, she, she will still tell you to this day that my dad is a little bit wacky. Because I, particularly as she got into the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and older age group, I quit telling her what to do. When she would, because I knew that I couldn't control, I wasn't going to be with her all the time, and so I just quit telling her what to do. But any time that she would go out, in fact, I still do this, just because it's turned into a bit of a, a family mantra for us. I, instead of saying, Faith, be home by 1030, don't go, you know, don't go harm anybody, make sure you drive carefully, uh, make sure, you know, you're courteous to people and so forth like that. I quit telling her those kind of things. And I said, Faith, please, please be aware of your decisions. And I don't know right now, if you ask my 34-year-old daughter, and I did the same thing with my son who's a little older, um, I don't know right now if you went and asked my daughter, Faith, what, what were the things that your dad told you to do when you were growing up? I'm not sure she could remember anything like that. But if you asked her, Faith, what did, what did your dad always ask you to be aware of when you were going out from under his, you know, roof? And I believe she would say, you know, my dad always told me to be aware of my decisions. And so um, I'm not discouraged. I hope that, that we will, in fact, be aware of our decisions. And, um, and, that, and I'm not just talking to the young people here as well. I'm talking to the people of my age and everything in between about the, the concept of, of being aware of our decisions. Um, you know, I, I have another good friend that said, uh, said, don't tell me what you believe. I'll know what you believe by how you act. And so that's become one of my latest uh, little things that I like to pass along because I was very inspired by that. But in any case, um, I'm very blessed to be here. I commend Youth Alert on the idea of putting time in this issue, not just reacting to the timing of an issue, I would suggest the same compliment is deserved by everybody else in the audience, and uh, I certainly feel very uh, fortunate to be part of this program. So we'll all go out together. Um, we will hopefully be aware of our decisions. We will seek excellence, as Ralph said, maybe 
maybe with courage to go with that. And, and I'm not discouraged because I recognize the asset that youth provide for our community and the magnificence that, that rests in, in each one in spite of some, uh, some stumbles that we all make from time to time. So I wish you Godspeed as we proceed forward as a community and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you so much. Not so fast, not so fast to have questions. We have about two hours. I got about twenty. First, any questions from the audience? Just raise. Your, okay. Um, have any youth gone up to spoke today? I didn't hear that. Have say. any youth gone up to speak today? Not yet. Okay. Is it possible that I could go up? Um, I'm somebody else's parent because I'm really eager to speak, and I think that because this is being a child, youth alert, you deserve a chance to speak. Absolutely. You're with Pack in Action. Uh, I think you guys are on at twelve thirty. Okay, so is 12.30 okay? No, could it be earlier possible? Well, we have the Black maybe. I'll tell you what, but let me talk to you after this. Go ahead. Oh, okay. You got it. Okay. Is Eric here? Oh, okay, well, let me, uh, any other questions? Besides time in the program. Okay, I have some. I was at that wonderful, uh, two weeks ago, at that wonderful breakfast you had for the YMCA Safe Place. Thousand people there. It was great feelings, and it was. I was just so impressed. It, it just felt like my people were there. But Dr. Hargan, superintendent for uh, Jefferson County School, said, "There's, if I get this right, twelve thousand homeless youth that are in the Jefferson County public system. Is, is that fall all on you, that burden?" Actually, no, it doesn't fall on us. We're, we're certainly proud to have a place for a, a lot of those young people, and, and we do connect them to their families and to school, which is very important and all that. But um, in any case, you know, it's, it's a, it's a uh, community net that we have uh, that allows people to, to utilize various agencies in our community um, to do that. And there are a lot of parents also that are part of that that, that find themselves homeless, and they, they're not necessarily neglecting their children. They just need uh, some support in the community. So I think that there's probably more room for that to grow, but certainly um, that's all, you know, it takes a village in that regard to provide the support to those young people. Okay, I got one more question. This is a loaded question. I hope you talked about this. You know, when I do these events and I have youth speak and I have, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm listening and I want to run out of the room because it seems like none of this is the kid's fault that it's, that maybe all the youth problems are maybe half, if not more, are adults' fault. Do you think that there's, there's a part of that or am I just being too sensitive? <laughs> yeah, well, well, like I said, I, I think a lot, you know, I think that and what I tell our staff at the Y is every, every child has a story, and I think that, that much of the behaviors we see are environmental. I, I don't believe that there is evil out there or anything like that. I think we do have to create an environment where we, are, we have accountability, that we offer a wide array of choices, and that we support those choices over time that are positive, and that there are also logical and reasonable consequences when, when we all, which, which we all have done, when we all kind of step off the path. And, and as I said earlier, we don't do anybody any service by just you know, tolerating inappropriate behavior. And, and my experience with the 700 is there's a high demand for, um, for direction and boundaries and support. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, President Tarvis. <laughs> I really appreciate that. You know, I mean, when I think about the why, you think about the principles. And it's not just, I mean, there's a president who doesn't just talk, I mean, they just don't talk to talk, they walk to walk. Here's the president basically saying the same principles that the why it stands for. So I thank everybody who, you know, and who doesn't go to Y? When people go to Y, I think they should thank a President Tarver's messages and think of the principles. Because, I mean, from top to bottom, you know, they live it. 